Hello everyone and welcome to Tigers Weekly. I'm your host, Zach Bayrudi. This week we'll take a look back at highlights from Pacific Place Pink Night this past Saturday where the men's and women's basketball teams swept a doubleheader in thrilling fashion at the Spanos Center. First though, we'll kick off this episode with some hitting tips from Big West batting champion Dustin Torcio. We joined Dustin in the batting cage behind Klein Family Field for some insight into his approach to the plate and the elements that have led to his great success in the Big West. Dustin, Big West batting champion a year ago, hit 369. Also, you're one of the toughest in the country to, to strike out of the play. You only struck out once in every 11 at-bats or so. Talk about your approach at the plate going into every at-bat. Are you looking for a certain, certain pitch? Are you looking, you know, based on a scouting report of a certain pitcher? Are you looking to take balls until you get a strike? What's your approach when you go up there mostly? Um, normally, like, before I get any strikes on me, I'm looking for... A pit, I'm looking for a certain spot, a certain pitch that I can hit, whether I want to pull it, go up the middle of the situation. If there's runner on second, no outs, I'm trying to pull the ball, obviously, to get him over. But not until about two strikes uh, do I change my approach normally. When I get two strikes, I widen out more and just try to put the ball in play, slap it somewhere, or bloop it in somewhere, and just try not to strike out because as long as you put it in play, you have a chance of getting on, I feel like. So... As long as I can put the ball in play with two strikes, that's my main goal. You talk about two different ways of going. You can pull or you can go the opposite way. Can you show us in your swing how you want to pull the ball and, and what you do mechanically to, if you want to go off of? Yeah, um, it's more, for me, it's more just like pitch. You know, if it's an inner half pitch, then obviously you want to catch it out in front and pull it that way. But, um, you know, it's all about pitches and where it's at. And if you want to go oppo, Normally you want to see it farther back, and uh, normally it's on the outer half of the plate because it's more difficult to pull a ball that's outside. So you want to catch it deeper and kind of just hit it the other way, and it just makes things easier and makes it simpler if you see it longer. Does your stance change either way, or what's, can you show us uh, your yeah, basic stance? Um, basic stance is right here. I like to be a little far back in the box and a little bit up on the plate. Um, as for like when I get to two strikes, I scoot up in the box a little bit just for the breaking balls. Don't like I can recognize it and like it'll be deeper. I can see if it's higher or lower, and it makes things just easier and simplify things. And um, that's the only time I can move up in the box. Um, if I'm trying to go a certain way or try to do a certain thing, if I'm trying to pull a ball with a runner on second, like I said earlier, I'll scoot up on the plate and maybe scoot back in the box a little bit for I can see it longer and catch it out in front. But other than that, besides when I bunt, I scoot up in the box a little bit, but that's about it. What's the key for you to recognizing certain pitches, like a breaking ball, or if you know it's going to be a fastball? Um, knowing the pitcher helps a lot. Our coaches provide us with scouting reports for every game, um, and they let us know what he has and what he likes to use in certain situations. So if you go into each pitch and kind of have an idea of what you're looking for and set your mind to, okay, I'm only going to swing if it's a fastball, um, and I'm only going to swing if it's a curveball, things really help, and it gets simpler. It makes it simpler if you say, okay, right, if it's a breaking ball, I'm not going to swing. If you get a fastball, then, you know, you just kind of got to react. And if it's two strikes, uh, you just got to go up there swinging at whatever's close. You're one of the best bunters in the Big West last year, second most with 15 sacrifice bunts. Take us through what it, what it's like to have to sacrifice going up to the plate. Um, it's just kind of like a mindset. And, um, you know, you got to want to get the job done. You got to understand what your job is. So when we're sacrifice bunting, it's just you're trying to give yourself up. So you can't worry about getting out of the box fast or worry about getting a hit. So you really just got to focus on getting the ball down, seeing the pitch, making sure it's a strike, and bat angle and putting it in the right spot. Can you show us a little bit of the bat angle? Yeah. Um, so first thing we do is we step forward most of the time. Some of us are differently just on what you're comfortable. And then uh, our coaches like to have our bat angle if we're bunting towards first base with a runner on first base and sacrificing. Then uh, we go with the top of the bat facing towards third. So we'll get down here like this and really make sure you have plate coverage. If you're running towards third base, you want to have the knob of the bat facing towards uh, first base. And make sure you have plate coverage again and start it with the top of the zone and kind of work your legs up and down. What's your favorite situation to get up there? In? Um, I'd say my favorite is second and third no outs just because you can do the least amount wrong in that situation. If you pop it up in the infield, it looks really bad, but um, you have the best opportunity to do. If you ground out, it's a successful bat. If the run scores, if you fly out, it's successful. You get a hit, two runs come in. So it has the greatest opportunity for success, I'd say. So that's probably it. 
runner at third base and, and less than two outs. Are you looking to get that first fastball and just make solid contact? Yeah, um, that's just another thing that the coaches provide us with the scouting reports. They'll a lot of the reports will say pitcher likes to throw off speed with the runners in scoring position. So with a pitcher like that, you want to wait and wait for a fastball because he's probably going to throw you an off speed first. Now, there's some pitchers that say they want to come fastball in, so you know you got to be ready for that too. So it really depends on the scouting report and according to pitchers but, and teams. You led the Big West in, in batting average last year. What's your goal going into this season? Um, my goal going into the season is to win more games uh, as a team. Uh, personal goals is just kind of do the same thing, hit more runners in, hit the ball hard, and hopefully things will work out. Last Saturday, the Pacific basketball teams raised money and awareness for the fight against breast cancer as they hosted Pacific Plays Pink Night at the Spanos Center. The women's team set the tone in the doubleheader by steamrolling UC Irvine 87-63 for their fourth straight win. The men's team followed with an exciting come-from-behind win over Cal State Northridge, in which Ross Rivera scored the final 17 points for Pacific, capped off by a last-second tip-in that sealed the victory. Let's take a look back at Saturday's highlights. slow in the first half, and I thought they were the aggressors, um, and I felt like we were playing a little frustrated, and so after we just talked about uh, you know, playing a little more confidently, loosening up a little bit, shoot a little more confidently, and, and aggressively defend a little bit better. I thought they were just the aggressors on offense and defense, uh, and even yet, yeah, the score was tied, so um, I thought we did a better job in that second half of just being more aggressive and assertive on the offensive floor. Yeah, it was a good, good day. First name was Kendall, um, and I think you know Kendall Kenyon had uh, 22 and seven on nine of 11 shooting, so that's not bad. Uh, and you know she just is really getting better and better. She just has a knack for scoring, understanding the lanes and where to go, and relocate. And she just doesn't miss too many down there. When she catches um, down there, she almost always completes it. Uh, and then Kendall Rodriguez just had one of those nights where the the, the rim got bigger and bigger the, the longer the game went. She just really did a great job leading us out there, talking on defense, being uh, an assertive player out there, knocking some big threes. I think everybody right now in, in, in this plane, you know, you're jockeying for a position right now for the conference. Um, and so it's just, just a lot of pushing and shoving, and everyone wants to be in those top couple spots. And, uh, so, you know, we got to win at home if we're going to hope to be in there at the end of the day. So uh, it's a good win at home, and, and, and you know, it's on to the next one. we got five left, and not one of them is going to be easy. Um, so this is a good, you know, good homestand. We won both, and now we got to pack our bags again and go on the road. But, uh, you know, play at North for tough Thursday, which could be tough. But we've got some momentum, and so do they, so it should be a good game. Final 17 points in the game. You end up with 26 career high. Uh, obviously, you know, it's a team effort, but you guys were down really big in the first half. Talk a little bit about just kind of that momentum building in the second half of kind of climbing back into the game. No, I just think that we were uh, just doing our jobs, you know, doing what Coach told us. You know, get, uh, the high post was open, the uh, duck unders, everything around the basket was open. You know, so we were doing what he told us. You know, I think we fed off the crowd a lot. There was a big crowd tonight. You know, their energy gave us energy, and it was great. Now talk a little bit about the, the final, you know, several several minutes of the game. You know, you guys came all the way back, took the lead, then you go back down six, and then you kind of get that get it back to even again, go down again, and then you know, obviously talk a little bit about that last play. Last play, you know, uh, Coach 
Coach drew up something, you know, set some screens for Lorenzo, get him off the ball screen. And, you know, uh, they switched out on him and he bounced it out. And I, I was trying to go get the ball, but then he gave it to Cohen, so I started floating towards the rim. And he got around this guy, shoved it off to, to Travis. And, you know, Travis had two guys on him, went for the layup, just ball bounced my way, I jumped up, so put it in. Um, talk a little bit about just the resiliency of being able to come back a, a bunch of times. You know, it just shows uh, our mental toughness. You know, coaches are talking about being tough uh, physically, mentally, and being down 12 at halftime, especially at home against Northridge. You know, we came out strong in the first half, we raised the deficit, and just came out with the win. Tigers are down at half. What, what do you talk to the team about at halftime? Well, number one, I wanted to get better spacing in our zone, get better movement in our zone offense. I thought we were very stagnant. I think our perimeter players were not protecting the ball. I thought we shot way too many threes, 14. Uh, we cut it down to seven and made more than we shot made the first half. We were looking for the three too much. We needed to penetrate the zone and also flash in the zone. I thought we did a great job of that. And I thought our guards made some really nice dump off passes for some easy baskets. The team has been in some close games, but technically 0, 0 for 6 in games decided by 5 or less. This kind of gets you out of that little... Well, I tell you, you know, being down 6 with you know, 4 minutes to go in the game, and you're at home and a team you're already beaten by 20s, there's not much more pressure than that. So I thought our guys responded. I thought they executed very well. I, I was disappointed in the dunk they made you know, against us. I thought we should have made a hard foul. We should have been in there clogging it up. But uh, we came back. Ross made a big time 3. I thought... You know, Colin, you know, getting the ball to Travis. I thought Travis had a really easy shot. I think he got fouled on the play, but he should still finish that ball because sometimes the ball doesn't bounce that way where Ross could tip it in. So Ross made a great tip in and finished a, gr a great game. Yeah, he scored the last 17 points. I mean, it, it, when's the That's last amazing. time you saw that? I don't really remember a player doing that. You know, I know Demetrius scored the last 15 at Santa Clara one year to win by two, but uh, that's a big time performance for Ross. And he's got those capabilities. He's a unique player that can go inside and outside, and he's getting better and better. This Saturday, both the baseball team and the men's basketball team are at home. The Pacific baseball team will host the Cal Bears in their home opener at 1 p.m. at Klein Family Field. After that game, fans can walk across the way to the Spano Center where the men's basketball team will host Idaho State in a bracket buster contest. Tip-off for the basketball game is set for 5 p.m. and We hope to see everyone on campus for what promises to be an exciting day. Until next time, so long everyone and go Tigers!